Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024 here at the Venetian in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host, co-analyst. How co about those Celtics? We haven't mentioned we them haven't all the time, but sorry. I just know. had to do it. We I mean, had to do it. We're, we're two on. Boston yes. people, we got it, we got to get the <laughs> high five. We are, indeed. <laughs> um, but let's let's welcome our guest now. <laughs> Sorry um, for that. Yes, Dion all good. Uber, <laughs> Global Sales Director, Adaptive Cloud and AI at Microsoft. Thank you so much for coming back on theCUBE. No, it's great to be back. Like last year in Barcelona, now in Vega. So it starts feeling really familiar here. Yes, indeed, indeed, exactly. That's what I was going to say. We last saw each other the last time you were on theCUBE. We were in Barcelona at an HPE show. So, why don't you start by giving our viewers the lay of the land and tell us a little bit about the partnership with HPE and the joint solution that you've built yeah, together. Yeah, no, great question. So, you know that HPE and Microsoft go way back many decades. And so really our history together of co-engineering, co-developing solutions, is really come together in a great portfolio of solutions that we have now together in the market. So when you talk around on-prem with Windows Server, or when you talk around hybrid cloud, we have really developed together a set of products that really allows us to run Azure anywhere and everywhere. And so when Startup meets with Antonio like two weeks ago, where they really talk around, hey, how do we bring AI to the next level? How do we help customers to really unpack their data? Is really where you see our partnership come together. So yeah, we are excited for the future. The future's bright, and we are really looking forward to doing more with HP in the future. Can you describe in some detail what the experience is like across those different estates? Yeah. Uh, and, and how, uh, I, I presume it's substantially identical, or maybe it's identical. I would love to understand where there's maybe perfection and where there's still some work to do. Yeah, no, great question. I think when you look at our joint customers right now, our commercial customers, a lot of their infrastructure, a lot of their data is siloed, right? Like they have IoT products, they have like edge computing, district computers computing, uh, hybrid computing, multi-cloud strategy. And when you think around all those silos, there's a lot of different data in all of those silos. And when you look at AI right now, and when you think around unpacking data and streamlining your data and your management, it's really critical to bring that all together. And so we as Microsoft came up with a new strategy, what we call adaptive cloud. An adaptive cloud is a cloud that adapt to the circumstances of our customers to run Azure anywhere and everywhere with our primary and secondary workloads. And that's a huge differentiator in the market compared to those other solutions out there. And so when you think about this, we really co-engineer together with HP and platform that really brings the cloud to the customer instead of the customer to the cloud with this strategy. And so I think we are really far ahead of like our innovation when you think about putting through virtual desktop or AI workloads or security workloads. Where I think is a little bit of opportunity is really like, hey, how can we really create an end-to-end -end experience from an AI perspective? So we have an end-to-end -to -end experience from a data point of view, but I think we have an opportunity to really unlock that more now with AI on top of that. But, but substantially, well, most Azure services you're saying are available. Yeah, absolutely. Like I would say 90% of, 95% of our services are available. So when you talk about Azure Defender, like our security product that a lot of our customers love in our cloud, you can run now Azure Defender on top of HPE hardware with Azure Stack 8 CIOS. Or if this Azure Backup or Virtual Desktop, all those things can now run locally on-prem for the customer environment. So the white space is in AI, but AI's, I mean AI's been around forever, but Gen AI is relatively new to yeah. most customers. So there's, it's not surprising that that's where the opportunity is. Yeah, there's where we are working really hard together, right? With like NVIDIA from a GPU perspective, utilizing the local GPU in the hardware. We are working together with Intel and AMD with their silicon technologies to really make sure that we have the best performance when you talk about large language, large language models. So yeah, it is, it's a great momentum that we are innovating together with. Well, thinking in terms of the adaptive, I mean, I, I really like that, it, you know, and it really speaks to the flexibility that so many customers are craving right now. Yeah. What are you hearing from customers in terms of what the adaptive cloud unlocks for them? Yeah, like, it comes a little bit back to my earlier point around silo data, right? Like, many customers have for many decades created a lot of data in their environment. When you talk about an on-prem data center or when you talk about big database solutions. And so I can give you a concrete example. I met with a really large telco last week in Canada who has a really big database called SQL 2012. SQL 2012 is a pretty old database, and so they never thought around that time around, hey, how do I apply AI on my data at that time? 
Now we are in 2024 where AI is really relevant, where we have multiple AI solutions. So now the question is, hey, I got an on-prem solution like SQL database, I got AI in the cloud. How do I really merge that together in a hybrid experience? And how do I unpack my data and analyze my data at scale and really see the trends I have? And so that's where we really see where adaptive cloud really adapt to the circumstances of our customer. We're bringing AI to the edge. We're bringing those Azure workloads that our customers love to their environments and really combine it with their local on-prem instances. Wow. So, I wonder if we could go through the progression of hybrid cloud and how we got to where we are today. When, when public cloud first became a thing, it was like yeah. a set of remote services somewhere up in the cloud. And then at around the same time, all the on-prem vendors said, well, we have private cloud. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was essentially whatever, pick your flavor with yeah. VMware, OpenStack, uh, Hyper-V, you know, what, what, Zen, whatever it was. Yeah. And they would put that together. And then somebody had the idea, was, well, let's connect them. But the, the experience was, Correct. It was a huge dissonance. And then, but, but what you're describing today is a singular cloud experience. Developers see sort of one experience. The yeah. underlying complexity is abstracted yeah. away and the user doesn't care. Correct. Doesn't, doesn't care, doesn't know. Yeah. Is that where we are today? Absolutely, like I would say the world is hybrid, right? Like there's always data that stay on prem and you have always customers who have a cloud vision first. And so we know that 65% of data and apps will stay outside the public clouds that are out there. And so there's a huge amount of data that is really like not being touched, right? And so we believe that hybrid cloud with our adaptive cloud strategy can help customers to unpack that data, to manage their data, and to avoid, to avoid to go in silos. So yeah, we believe strongly that the world is hybrid and that's the right way to go. Well, and this is an interesting, the, the, your, I, I saw your numbers in our notes, and I think it's, I have always said it's probably 35 to 40% of, of the workloads are in the public cloud. Yeah. Um, Others say 90% is outside, and I don't think it's that high. <laughs> no. It, it, it's a lot of the stuff that should be in the cloud is in the cloud, and maybe some folks over-rotated. Yeah. That's fine. What have you seen there? I mean, it's not like there's this, I'm not a repatriate, <laughs> but, I, but I am about balance. Yeah. What are you seeing there in terms of that hybrid balance? Yeah, no, we see hybrid really as the middle way between best of both worlds, right? Like, we as Microsoft have been innovating with HP for a long time in Windows Server, right? So we have Windows Server 2012, 2016, and now we have 2022, and 2025 is coming out next year. So we have been innovating on-prem, but now we have been innovating as well on the hybrid piece, really bringing that all together. And so I think a perfect example of that is a huge retailer in Australia, right? They have over 800 retail stores, and normally in those retail stores they had sitting an on-prem server that was not connected to the cloud. But one of their big issues was like, hey, we have a lot of theft. We have more than $30 million cost per year on theft. How can we bring AI to the edge into my retail store and do like analytics on algorithms to see, hey, if there's strange behavior, can I reduce theft? And so when you think about that, what we did with that retailer is we have an HPE server, in DL380, on Intel technology with Aztec HCIOS that's connected to the cameras into the stores. We have worked with a third party ISV to do like AI algorithms to recognize like strange behavior or theft, as well doing analyzing the shelves for restocking and that's connected into the cloud, connected back to a mobile phone for the store manager. And so the store manager can see now in one single user interface if someone is stealing, or if there's some restocking needed, or if there's strange behavior in the store. And that's I think a perfect example to your point of view where you really bring the cloud to the customer and where we really innovate together. And I wanted to, you mentioned um, analytics. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about sort of where data plays a role here. Microsoft's really transformed its data stack yep. quite extensively. You got partnerships, uh, we were at Databricks last week, we know you've had a big partnership with them, you got OpenAI, sort of changes things around. You bring Fabric into the, the mix yep. now. You've now got this much more cohesive data stack, much more cohesive than it's ever been, and you have the potential to apply co-pilots, take action. Yep. So I wonder if you could talk to the data experience and how it fits in hybrid cloud. Yeah, that's a really good question. So we have seen a lot of customers who have a lot of data on-prem, to my earlier point. And so when you think around data, data is really sensitive, but it has as well a lot of value when you think around customer data or manufacturing data or progress data. And so what we really see from a data point of view is really where the customers are bringing that into a hybrid space where they are pulling either through AI. So to your point, Fabric is a perfect example. 
we enabled now Microsoft Fabric that normally runs into the cloud. You can pull that through now with Arc-enabled services to run that on top of HPE hardware and utilizing the local data to be analyzed. And really create an end-to-end -end from cloud to edge and from edge to cloud, pulling your view on what is your data saying? What are the key trends in that space? And that is something we have never seen before because to my earlier point, we had a lot of data sitting in silos when you think around 10 years ago, five years ago. And now with Mike's or with our great partnership with OpenAI, when you think around Fabric, or as well with other ISVs we work with, like Happy Face, we're really optimizing their solutions and their data solutions on top of our OS, on top of our platform with HPE to unlock that data. And we kind of went from, you know, kind of converged infrastructure was this bolt on some different stuff and lay some software on top, and, and, and to a point now, you mentioned with Arc, yeah. it's a much more seamless experience, and, and that, I think, takes us finally to what the original vision of hybrid was. Yeah. What's the next vision of hybrid? Where does this go? Is it edge? Is it? Yeah, it's a really good question. Like, we are innovating a lot together with HPE. So we see a lot of customers who are saying, hey, I need small form factor designs that I can put in my retail store, in my factory, or in a remote location. Like we have customers, for example, who have cruise ships all across the world. And so those cruise ships need to be rocketized because you're all over the world. And so how do we connect that into, let's say, Starlink and utilize satellite internet to connect it back to the cloud? So the future for hybrid for us is like we are innovating at the edge. We are bringing all kinds of form factors together that runs on our software. That's part of our adaptive cloud where we adapt to the circumstances of our customers to run Azure anywhere and everywhere because we believe that the world is hybrid. And so the innovation where you have one single subscription in Azure, where you can run your workloads from cloud to Azure for for cloud, is for us the best way to have that experience. Uh, interesting, you brought in Starlink, because that now, can, now in, in the vision of everything connected. Yeah. What about the bridge there? Because sometimes you have to assume at the edge that there's no connectivity. Correct. And then somehow you have to sync up. Maybe it's a truck roll, or maybe it's intermittent. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, connectivity, how, how do you think about that world in your hybrid vision? Yeah, that's a really good, good question. So there's always situations where it's disconnected scenarios or air cap scenarios when you think around federal customers. But when you talk about customers who are like cruise ships or mining companies or like the US Navy, they're out there on the oceans or out there on the countryside. And so to really connect that, it's really important that we have the right partnerships across the world. And so when you talk about express routes, when you talk about connecting it to Starlink, it's a really critical piece of like connecting the world all together. And so I think a perfect example in this space is like we work with a really big cruise ship company who's going all over the world. And so what we do right now is we equip over 20 cruise ships with Azure Stack HCI in their cruise ship connect all of their ship sensors into our hardware. Then we connect that with an express route into the satellite internet with Starlink. And then from there we connect it into Arc, into the Azure cloud. And so who thought five years ago that you can have one single user experience and see all of your cruise ships across the world, all of your data and all of your operations and see the up and the downtime in one user experience. And that's to my earlier point. It's not around silo data. It's around how do you bring the data together? How do you bring your orchestration together? And how do you bring that all together an Azure experience. And you can do that today, most of that. That's what we do today, yeah. We meet with a lot of great customers, so yeah, I'm really excited for the future. Yeah, wow, this, this is mind-blowing to, <laughs> to hear you talk about the, the, these developments. I want to just dig into a little bit with the collaboration in terms of what we, what we heard Antonio talking about on the main stage today. Yeah. Um, the attributes, the most important attributes of AI, that it's responsible, ethical, sustainable, uh, inclusive, robust. How much of those values, and, and we sort of debated a little bit this morning, is yeah. this just motherhood and apple pie, are these buzzwords? <laughs> or how much is this really ingrained in what you two are doing together as partners? Yeah, well, that's, that's a good question. So, to be honest, what Antonio highlighted this morning is the most important thing, right? You want to do ethical things if you're a company as well as a person. And so, Sarja had a really great memo like three weeks ago where he said security first. And that's for us the most critical things. We believe security and ethical approach is the most important approach when you develop products. Because it all comes with like trusting our brand, 
trusting our technologies as your trusted advisor in this journey when you talk to our customers. And so when you think around our joint initiatives, it is like, hey, it has to, done to do with sustainability, making sure that we are carbon neutral. It has to do with like components, making sure that we have the right components that are ethical. But as well, software is such a critical piece because to your earlier point, you really bring that all together through software. And so when we develop software, we have those key cultural things in mind around making sure it's an inclusive software experience, but as well as the secure and ethical when you start using it. Because, hey, we all know AI can do a lot, right? And we need to make sure that AI is used in the right way with the right customers at the right level. Excellent. Well, Dion, a pleasure having you on theCUBE. Always, always, great always a really fun here. conversation. Thanks for coming back. Okay, yeah. Learned Thank a lot. You. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante and John Furrier. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.